Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. If you are able to stand out of respect for the reading of God's word, please do so at this time. Romans chapter 12, beginning at verse 9. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer. Contributing to the needs of the saints. Practicing hospitality. Amen. Bless those who persecute you. Amen. Bless uh -huh. and curse not. Amen. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Amen. Be of the same mind toward one another. Yeah. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Right. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Amen. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Amen. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen. 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 Our, our message for this morning is social security. Social security. You may be seated. Amen. Social security. Amen. Amen. This, this, this is our third in, in the series of proving God's will. Amen. Uh -huh. And, and, and right. see, I hate sometimes the definition <coughs> that the world gives to stuff. Amen. See, the world's definition of stuff and God's definition of the same thing is 99.9% .9 of the time 100% different from each other. Amen. See, when we think of social security when it comes in worldly terminology, we think of financial stability. Yes. We think in finances, my, my social, my, my status, my, my personal, my lifestyle, that's my social. The people I hang around with, what I'm able to acquire financially won't be secure unless I have money. Unless I have a 401k or, or, or employee stock ownership proposition or, or some IRAs or, or, or some Roths or whatever you want to call it. You may call it a hole in your mattress or a hole in the backyard. You, you may call it a, 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 a something, a, a stash pot. You know what I'm saying? But see, unless you got something in those mechanisms... And your social standing is not secure according to world's terminology. All right. But see, God says totally different. Uh -huh. He says your social security is not predicated on your financial stability. Your social security is predicated on your spiritual maturity. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Say, my social security, my social security is predicated on my, on my spiritual maturity. maturity. In other words, in order for you to be socially secure, you have to be spiritually mature. All right, all right, all right. Let me break it down for you. If, you. if you come back to the text today, we're still talking about are you proving God's will? You remember God's will. Two weeks ago, we, we told you that God's will is that which is good and acceptable and perfect. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh, and, and we are still talking about, are you doing that to prove what God's will is? Right, and right. we talked about last week, are you still proving God's will? And, and we talked about how the many members of the body serve the body. Uh -huh. And it's not what your church can do for you, all right, all but right. for what you can do for your church. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Amen. Uh -huh. we, 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 we talked about the, the ministerial part of proving God's will. All right. the, the ministry part, the church part, yes. the praying part, the faith part, 
This week we're not talking about the so-called spiritual uh, uh, church part of it. This time we're talking about how you deal with people. Amen. And when we talk about how you deal with people, we get right down to earth of what a lot of people struggle with on a daily basis. All right. uh, you may have your prayer on. Right. You may have your ministry all together. But your standing with people is in hell. All right. All right. You ask somebody about right. Jane Doe or John Doe. You don't want to ask them again. Because what they didn't gave you the first time about that person was so negative to where you don't want to hear nothing else they got to say about it. All right. So we need to know how to not only get it right in church, yes, we need to know how to get it right when we deal with other people. All right. All right. So, so let's, 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 let's take it to the people part of this conversation. Uh, if you look at the text here, you have to be able to practice, according to Paul, when he spoke to the church at Rome, sincere love. Sincere love, Sincere. as opposed to what? As opposed to hypocritical love. How can love be hypocritical? Let's look at the text. In verse 9, it says, let love be without hypocrisy. Let love be without hypocrisy. In other words, there is a love that encompasses hypocrisy. See, true love has no sincere let me back up. True love has no hypocrisy associated with it. True love is not, I will, and then you don't. Mm -hmm. True love is not, yes, and then you go out and do a no. True love is without hypocrisy. Yeah. I don't know about you, but many people love hypocritically. Right. When a husband cheats on his wife, All right. that's hypocritical love. Vice versa as well. All right. When a parent doesn't take care of their child, mm -hmm. that's hypocritical love. All right. All right. When you tell your loved one, you're obligated to God to be respectful to them and to treat them in a certain way, and you don't. Mm -hmm. That's hypocritical. All right. Paul says, let love be without hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And if he wants to break it down to what that actually means, it says, abhor what is evil and clean to what is good. Amen. Love becomes hypocritical when we start clinging to what is evil and fleeing from what is good. Yes. That's when your love becomes hypocritical. When you start clinging to what is evil, how does a man go out and two-time his wife? He begins to cling to what is evil and he pushes aside what is good. How does a parent go aside from loving their child. They begin to cling to what is evil and to abhor what is good. All right. You get it twisted. How can one Christian get into a feud with another Christian? Mm -hmm. They start clinging. The root of all evil is associated with mammon. It's associated with worldliness. It's associated with money. Yeah. Your relationship broke down somewhere with that other Christian, be it a family member, be it a friend, be it a loved one, or be it a child, because somewhere in the line, you started clinging to something that's evil. And that evil has got you focused on what is bad and got you holding on to what is bad and pushing away that which is good. And at that moment in time, your love becomes hypocritical. Hypocritical. The book, the Bible tells me, and uh, you look down at the text in Isaiah chapter 5 and verse 20. You don't have to turn there. The prophet Isaiah said that in the end times, men will call bad good and good bad. Yes, sir. Yes, I don't know what time y'all think we're living in. All right, all right. Say that. Right now, right now. Gay marriage. They're calling that good. They're calling it good. Heterosexual marriage. That's got a bad connotation on it nowadays. In the fact that they're not saying it's bad, but it's not even being hyped anymore. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Love of a man for a woman is way down on the list of priorities. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Love of a man for a man and love of a woman for a woman is being pushed from the mountaintops. Right. It's being legislated yeah. into law. Uh -huh. yeah. 
Don't tell me we're not living in the end times. Isaiah had it right when he said in the end times they're going to call bad good and good bad. I don't care where you go. Whatever you listening to. It's hyping that which is bad trying to make the bad good. So much so to where we as believers, if we're not on top of our spiritual game, if we're not prayed up in the word of God, if we're not studied up, if we're not filled with the Holy Spirit, we get duped. We get duped. When you ride past Planned Parenthood and it don't bother you, you get duped. Every morning for the past three years, I got to ride by the biggest Planned Parenthood. You see how they call bad good and good bad? They say you're planning your parenthood, church. You, you, you need to understand what the will of God is. You need to be wise to the ways of the devil. All that is, is a baby killing station. But you need to come here. So we can plan your, it's good to plan your parent. See, because if you don't plan your parenthood, then you can have children and you're not intended to have children. And if you're not intended to have children, then you can't take care of them. Let me tell you something. God specializes in cleaning up mistakes. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right. In the end times, they were called bad good and good bad. Uh -huh. So a newborn baby is bad. Come on. A newborn baby is bad. If you say you got to kill him, then a newborn baby is bad. Mm -hmm. My Lord. Mm -hmm. See how so the devil works? Mm -hmm. He gets you into thinking that which the world thinks, and now it doesn't even affect you anymore. Mm -hmm. But Paul says, if you want to prove the will of God, if you want to secure your social standing, which is your standing amongst others, don't call bad good and call good bad, call good good, and call bad bad. Right. If it barks, it's a dog. If it bites, it's a dog. If it praises God, it's spiritual. If it don't praise God, it ain't spiritual. If it's of God, you'll see the spirit move through it. If it's not of God, there will be no godly spirit moving through it. It will only be that of a evil situation. Look at the text. We come back to the text. We have to understand that not only must love be consider, abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. It says be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Devoted means that I must be committed to one another. I must commit to you. You must commit to the person sitting next to you. You must commit, not half-heartedly, not to be here today, gone tomorrow. I must commit to you. In brotherly love. I must be devoted. If I'm not devoted to you, then I'm your friend today and I don't know you tomorrow. Right. And that's all right if you're of the world. But if you're inside the church, ain't no, you my friend today and tomorrow I don't know you. Right. You my friend today, even though you stuck on my toes today, you still my friend. You my friend who stuck on my toes, but you still my friend. <laughs> now we can deal spiritually with the toe stepping on. <laughs> but you're still my friend. Yeah. Right. So it says here that be devoted to one another. The problem is many people in the church ain't devoted to each other. Yeah. We have hearted with one another. Yeah. We happy today and mad tomorrow with one another. Yeah. We worship today and curse tomorrow with one another. But we're going to talk about that in a second. It says give preference to one another in honor. Give preference to one another in honor. That means basically Put others before yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. See, people get quiet when I talk about this. The kids get quiet. The adults get quiet. Right. Nobody wants to put others ahead of themselves. Right. Be honest with yourself. Right. You don't think of others first. Right. The first thing come to your mind is right. how I'm going to take care of me and mine. Yeah. And the me came before the mind. Amen. That means you come before everything that come under you. Right. Huh. Huh. It says... Give preference. In other words, prefer the other ahead of yourself. If you think I'm lying, go to uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. I want you to see this. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 3. Paul is talking to the church and 
He's saying, do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit. But with humility of mind, let each of you regard one another as more important than himself. Regard one another as more important than himself. I ain't going to call them names out. I'm just going to speak generally. Who do you regard outside of your husband and your wife and your children and your mama and your daddy and your sister and your brother? Who do you regard outside your family? This is, we are family. This is the church. Who do you regard as more important than yourself? This is the word of God. Amen. Regard yes, it is. others as more important than yourself. Mm -hmm. If you ain't struggling with that, then you already in heaven. Mm -hmm. Since I don't see no clouds around here, I don't see no bright sun and no <laughs> river flowing from the sun, and I don't see no trees hanging on both sides of the rivers, I'm pretty sure I'm not in heaven yet. The air condition ain't cold enough, so I know I'm not in All heaven right. yet. All right. All right. I still got aches and pains in my body, so uh -huh. I know I'm not in heaven uh -huh. yet. Uh -huh. So as long as I can feel my shoulder hurting every single morning, I can rest assured I'm not in bright glory. So as long as I'm on earth, who do you regard as more important than yourself? Mm -hmm. Who are you going to put ahead of yourself? We're talking about giving God the glory. We're talking about putting people ahead of ourselves. We're talking about proving the will of God. If you can't put others ahead of yourself, you're not proving the will of God. You're still thinking in the flesh and not in the spirit because in the flesh it is impossible for you to put others ahead of yourself. But in the spirit, all things are possible because now you're working in the realm of Jesus Christ. Can you put a stranger ahead of yourself? Mm -hmm. Jesus put you ahead of himself to the way he died for you. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes. And yet you won't consider putting us, not only let's step to, you may be even to the point to where you will put a church member ahead of yourself. Good for you. Mm -hmm. Ring your bell, toot your horn, praise God. <laughs> when you go out on the street and put a stranger ahead of yourself, would you put a sinner ahead of yourself? Would you put a murderer ahead of yourself? Would you put a known adulterer ahead of yourself? That's what Jesus did when he put us ahead of him. Amen. He put sinners ahead of himself. Yeah. He put adulterers ahead of himself. He put fornicators and thieves and idolaters ahead of himself. He died for them. That should they change their mind and accept him. The penalty of their sin has already been paid. See, we got this thing all wrong. We need to think spiritually. And the only way to get to that point is to get out of self. Amen. Unzip Amen. this fleshly body and get Amen. into the spirit. Amen. And you can do it because God has given each man the ability to think spiritually. Wow. Yea, though we live in a fleshly body. Amen. Look at the text. It says, it says we must practice sincere love by putting others ahead of ourselves. And we must also serve God as a slave is supposed to serve God. What am I talking about? Well, look at the next verse. If you go down to verse 11, Paul's still talking to the church. He says, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, and devoted to prayer. Well, this whole verse 11 and 12 is about serving the Lord. If you look at the second part of, uh, part of verse 11, it says, serving the Lord. The second part is explained by the first part of verse 11. It says, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit. That is how we're supposed to serve the Lord. So if you're lagging behind in diligence, see, when I serve you, when I get it right socially with you, that is part of my service to God. I cannot say that I'm serving God and I'm not right with you. I cannot say that I'm serving God and I'm treating you like doo-doo. I cannot say that I'm serving the Lord and I'm treating you like a red-headed stepchild. I got to get it right with you first. You got to get it right with me first. 
It says, if I'm going to serve the Lord, I must not be lagging behind in diligence. Many of us are straggling behind in our service to God. God has moved on down the road with what he wants us to do. And we ain't doing it. We're straggling behind. We're not diligent. We're not eager to serve God. We're not diligent in serving others. We're not diligent in proving the will of God. Yes, sir. Opportunities come and they pass us right by. There's a person on the street that you can talk to. There's a person on your job right. that you can show right. some spiritual love by putting them ahead of yourself. There's a person in the church house that you can be a little bit more eager to help out their time of need. There is people suffering, but you refuse to put yourself aside. And when you refuse to put yourself aside, you are actually putting God aside. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hmm. You have to be able to love people. A 95-year-old preacher tell me that every time I see him. And I know he's going to say it before I see him. Because it's part of what he says. But every time he says it, it's just like new to me all over again. You have to be able to love people. Listen to what that's saying now. That's saying nothing more than what Paul is saying. You got to be able to love people. I'm not saying love people's ways. Because people's ways can wreak havoc on you. But you have to be able to separate their ways from who they are and still love them. See, God loves us, but he hates our sins. And if our goal is to become more God-like, we have to love people and hate their sinful ways. We can't lag behind in doing that. We have to be fervent in the spirit. That means in the spiritual context, we have to be boiling over yes, sir. to love other people. Mm. That's the Greek word for that. Fervent in spirit. Boiling over. Eager. Anxious to serve others. Mm. Sometimes it's like pulling teeth to get us to serve one another. Mm. And then when we're doing it, we, 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 we're counting off what we do. I did this for that person. I did this for that person. I'm going to do this for that person. And I will in the future when I get time, get around to when my schedule permits, I'm going to do this for that person. God says you need to be boiling over, ready to do for them as you would have them do unto you. The reason why you ain't getting that which is supposed to be done unto you, done unto you, is because you ain't doing for them. You wait no blessings to come your way. You chasing the blessing when your blessing is in serving others. Mm. Who have you served lately? Mm. I'm not talking about self-service. Mm. See, we 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 we're stuck in this modern terminology. We so used to the modern day gas station. You get out, you 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 you, you clean your own windshield. They got the little bucket with the windshield handle in there. You clean your own windshield. Over there, you pay 25 or 75 cents. You can go and add up your own tires. You can go over there and pay another 25 cents. You can fill up your own radiator. And if you got about 65, 70 dollars in your pocket, you might be able to fill up your own tank. <laughs> it's called self-service. Uh -huh. But see, God ain't about self-service. Uh -huh. He's about servicing others. I remember like 25, 30 years ago, you whip up into the gas station, there was this black line that they had stretched from the garage all the way out to the street. It had a little alley in it. And on the end of it, they had a little screw stuck into it so the alley couldn't go out of it. And when your car rolled over, it went ding, ding. Uh-huh. 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 And Bubba Joe sitting inside behind the push button cash register would grab his hat, sling it on his head, run outside and say, how can I help you today? Uh -huh. And you say, give me about eight dollars of no lead. And it fill your whole tank up. And before your tank is being filled up, he go grab his squeegee, he clean your windows, he pull his gauge out of his pocket, he check your air, he get the air, psst, 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 and he wouldn't even ask for a tip. It's called full service station. God ain't in the business of self-serving. He's in the business of full service. God wants you to go up to somebody and say, ding, ding, how can I help you today? Yes, sir. Mm. Ding, ding. He wants to know, can you go up to somebody and say, 
Does the windshield of your heart need to be squeezed clean? All right. Does the air pressure of your encouragement all need right, to be boosted up, pounded to? All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, I understand. You just spiritually out of gas. Well, I'll tell you what. Let me fill your tank up with the word of God. Right, Turn with me to John right. chapter 1 and verse 1. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. In the beginning, oh, the and the word, and the word was with God. What you halfway? You halfway? Turn to John 3 and 16. All right, all right, all right. What did it say? Tell that shall but what you three quarters for now? Well, let me send you on your way with he will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. need your money. Just come back when you need to be filled again. Amen. Don't go across the street to the gas station of no hope. All right. Come over here to the gas station of full expectation all right, all right, of inheritance right, in the right, kingdom right. of God. All right, all right. Ain't no self-service in the kingdom. We have to be able to serve one another. All right. Wipe my windshield clean when it's dirty. Mm -hmm. You might have to put up with me backfiring every now and again. <laughs> My Lord. Feed me the right word. My Lord. Don't give me premium. All right. Give me premium, no man. Don't give me that watered down version. Uh -huh. I'll start backfiring on you. Uh -huh. All right, all right, all right, all right. Don't Fervent in spirit, uh -huh. serving the Lord. That's how we serve the Lord. We 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 uh, not lagging behind, fervent in the spirit. We have to be able to rejoice in hope. And I see Christians even this morning. I see Christians coming to church and they're not rejoicing in hope. And we're talking about proving what the will of God is. We're talking about social security, and yet we're walking around with our heads bowed down. The uh -huh. Bible uh -huh. says uh -huh. that we are to rejoice in hope. In hope of what? In hope of our salvation in Jesus Christ. If that don't fire you up, can't nothing fire you right, up. Right, if you can't right, shout right, because of the inheritance right, that you got right. in Jesus yes, Christ, sir. then you might as well keep your mouth yes, closed yes. for eternity. Yes. Rejoicing in hope, uh, persevering in tribulation. Many of us, we don't like to persevere in tribulation. Yeah. We like to throw in the towel. We like to mumble and groan. We like to whine and complain instead of persevering in tribulation. Just because times are tough don't mean you get to whining. All right. All right. All right. God does not like to hear his children whining no more than you like to hear your child whine. Amen. You know how it is when your child whines. Shut up. <laughs> True. Ain't I been good to you? Yeah. You got clothes on your back. Right. You got a roof over your head. Right. You got food in your stomach. Yes. What you whining about? Talking about you want it this way. You get it whatever way I give it to you. Yeah. As long as you getting it. Yeah. And God is saying to you as a believer, shut up. Shut up. Yeah. What you whining about? You asked for a job, I gave you a job. Right. Now you're complaining that the house was too long. You asked for a house, and I gave you a house. Now you're complaining about the house, no. Right. You're complaining about the house, no, because you didn't complain so much on the job till they got ready to find you. <laughs> Shut up. You want caviar, yet you got some dip sauce that you in the refrigerator. Get like Forrest Gump. Uh, What's the name? Bubble Gump? That's right. Uh, uh, dill sausage casserole. <laughs> dill sausage pie. <laughs> dill sausage. <laughs> you better learn how to work in your blessings. Yes. Y'all yes. sound like the Israelites Ooh. in the desert of sin. Yes. God give them man to eat and they complaining about the man. When you need to be saying, thank you, Lord, for giving me this day yes. my daily bread. Yes, 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 yes. Better learn how to turn that bread into some sweet cakes. Yes, sir. Pour a little syrup on, have your syrup bread. 
Yeah. You're laughing because you know what I'm talking about. Little mayonnaise sandwich. We can go prison style with it, just bread and water. But he gave you your daily bread. Look at the text. It says, per uh, persevering in tribulation. Verse 12. The last part of verse 12. Uh-oh. Devoted to prayer. Mm -hmm. Devoted to prayer. Mm -hmm. Are you devoted to prayer? Amen. Oh, amen. I hear a bunch of amens. A lot of folks are quiet, too. I, that's all right. I ain't going to point out who ain't say nothing. Cause I don't know if they ain't say nothing because they're not devoted to prayer or they just, in their heart, saying amen. You got to be devoted to prayer. Uh -huh. Devoted to prayer. I didn't feel like I was devoted enough to pray. So I set an alarm on my smartphone that every day at noon, my phone goes off to remind me to stop and pray. And God said, you know what? I'm going to get you to the point where you have to set your phone to remind you to pray. But before you get into a habit of checking your phone at 12 or, or either waiting on it to ring at 12, Amen. I'm going to get you to the point to where before 12 o'clock come, you always turning it off because you already prayed about five, six times before Amen. it even got to that point. Amen. I'm going to put enough in your way that between home and noon, you're going to have enough to pray about. All right. All right, I need to pray about my house. You need to pray about my marriage. Amen. You need to pray about my daughter. Right. You need to pray about my finances. Right. You need to pray about my transportation. Oh, right. just getting started, Lord. You need to pray about the day. You need to pray about the country. You need to pray about the rain. Oh, I'm not even really in the first quarter yet, Lord. You need to pray about the church. You need to pray about the leaders. You need to pray about the deacons. You need to pray about the ushers. You need to pray about, oh, wait a minute, we ain't even through the church yet. You need to pray about the job. You need to pray about the boss. You need to pray about the project. Wait a minute. You need to pray about my health. You need to pray about my wealth. You need to pray about my mind. Well, wait a minute. I ain't through yet. You need to pray about tomorrow. You need to pray without ceasing. And, and you know what? And I ain't got to read. I can go all day without repeating myself. Then I'm on the way to the restroom. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, right. Done that. Done that. Done that. But I ain't gonna turn it off. I want it to buzz every single time. Cause when it buzz, I want to be able to look back and say, check that off, God. I've been praying all day long. And I ain't through yet. As long as you got me breathing, walking, and talking, I got something to pray about. Right. And if I ain't praying about it, I'm giving you praise about it, Heavenly right. Father. Thank you for my daughter in school. Thank you for getting my wife to work safely. Thank you for the project that's near this end. Thank you for the project that's near the end on my job. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for what the church is going and where he came from. Thank you, Lord God, for every place you brought us from, from where you got to, where you're going to take us to. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Just thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. You can thank him all day. I was talking to a brother in the church and he says that he can pray with his heart hat on. Praise the Lord. He can pray with his heart hat on. And ain't got to worry about the other people knowing what he's doing. Because it's so loud on that construction site. Just pray, Brother Raymond. Just pray. Pray. Pray on your way to the igloo water cooler. Pray on your way to the outhouse, the in-house. Pray on your way, on your plate. Just pray, pray, pray. Just whatever you do. Thank you, Lord. You got me from 8 to 10. Lord, give me from 10 to 12. Thank you, Lord. You got me from 10 to 12. Amen. Amen. The text says in verse 12, devoted to prayer. Amen. Devoted, committed. You got to be committed to prayer. You can't pray on Monday, and God don't hear from you again until Sunday. All right. Amen. Lord, everything I need to cover, I hit you with on Monday. Well, if you don't need to pray over it, then if he brought you to, to Sunday, shouldn't you have been praising Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Amen. and Sunday? Amen. Amen. You ain't got no excuse. Devoted to prayer. Look at verse 13. Now we need to understand the concept of friendly sharing. We're still trying to get our social security. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Look at verse 13. Contributing to the needs of the saints. That's the church. 
contributing to the needs of the saints. Contributing to the need, and this is one example. Amen. Contributing to the needs Amen. of the saints. Amen. Contributing to the needs of the saints. And, but, 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 but it just don't stop there. That this is on a high, this is on a corporate level. This ain't even talking corporately. The Bible is talking about individually as believers. Amen. Find another believer in need. Amen. There's your time to give God glory. All right. It says contributing to the needs of the saints. It didn't say non-saints. We'll get to that part later. I'm not ruling them out. Contributing to the needs of the saints. Practicing hospitality. Practicing hospitality. When you contribute to the needs of others, you are practicing your hospitality. Uh -huh. Practicing your hospitality. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 7 says, For God loves right. what? Yeah. God loves a cheerful giver. Right. Practice your hospitality cheerfully. Give not only to God in the form of the church, Amen. but give to other believers in Jesus Christ so as they have need, meet that need if you're able to meet that need. But don't meet that need in anger. If you want to give to somebody, don't brag about what you gave. Amen. Amen. Well, I gave sister such and such, this and that and the other because they needed it. And all you're trying to do is elevate yourself in the sight of mankind. All right, all right. And at that point, right. they may be blessed by what you gave them, yeah. but your blessing is just going out there. Yeah. God can use you to bless somebody else, and in the same stroke of that back, you yeah. lost yours. Yeah. Because you're not giving out a sincerity of your heart, even though they were blessed by it, they know if they're spiritual that it's God the one that gave them to them, not you. God just used what he gave you to give to them. And now you walk around letting the devil use you and hot yourself up. Let, let's talk about that heart and yourself. Up. But for, before we get there, let's let's look at verse 14. We have to uh, 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 know how to respond to others. Yes, this is what we're being wronged by people. I want you to pay close attention because I'm going to go through this pretty quickly. Verse 14, bless those who persecute you. Bless and curse not. Wait a minute. I'm supposed to bless those who persecute me? Amen. I'm supposed to bless you and you done spat on me? I'm supposed to bless you and you done stole my job? I'm going to hit you real hard. I'm supposed to bless you and you can stole my wife. Watch it now. Hmm. <laughs> well, <that's good> <laughs> like Peter said, Lord, increase my faith. <laughs> increase my faith. <laughs> I am not Jesus. <laughs> I am not Jesus. And right now I need him. <laughs> On a high level. Because yes, oh, yes, that flesh is trying to bubble yes, over. Yes, Lord, yes, some things I just don't understand. Yes, <laughs> look now, look. Bless those who yes, persecute you. Bless and curse not. If you're supposed to pray for murderers, if you're supposed to pray for murderers, this is on top of that. They ain't killed you. Now, I, I, I'm not saying you that yet. I'm telling you, I'm not. <laughs> I got to be real with you. Amen. Lord, increase my faith. Amen. I know what your word says. Amen. Amen. And I know I'm not in heaven yet either. Amen. <laughs> bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Look at this. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. That's called empathy. That's called empathy. That means that means empathy means understanding how someone else feels. See who was that? Who, who, who that? That was Prince and Shaka Khan. They got it all wrong. They both sung songs one behind the other. I feel for you. I think I love you. See, this ain't about feeling for you. This is about understanding how you feel. See, when I feel for you, I can come back and say something stupid like, I think I love you. That's right. I feel for you. I think I love. Listen to this, that's great. I think I love. It didn't sound crazy. It took me back when I was jamming it now. I think I love. God said, it ain't a pop. I feel for you because I think I love you. God says, I understand how you feel, and I do love you. It's about loving others. 
that old cliche about somebody going through bereavement. <coughs> Brother, I ain't gonna act like I understand how you feel. Wait a minute. If you ever dealt with somebody died before, then you understand how they feel. Well, what it is, you don't want to offend them in their moment of bereavement. But I'm going to tell you right now, we need to start being real with people. If you have experienced what they've experienced before. Brother, let me tell you something. I understand exactly how you feel. I went through it. My daddy died. My sister died. I know how you feel. You feel like hell right now. But brother, let me tell you something. The sun will come out tomorrow. Yes, sir. Just Wait, you wait and see yes, sir. that tomorrow, you bet your bottom dollar right. that the sun will come out tomorrow. Yeah. You know where that comes from? That's a secular song to explain weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So I know you're feeling down. I know you're feeling persecuted. I know you feel like all is gone. But God will meet all your needs. So, brother, I ain't going to lie and say, I'm going to say, I have plenty of people down on me. You will get through this. I'm going to pray for you, and I trust God is going to bring you through like he brought me through. Amen. Empathize. Right? You, you have to understand how other people feel if, you, if you're going to be able to deal with them. Verse 16, be of the same mind toward one another. That means that we have not completed church until we have attained to the unity of faith. That's spoken of in the Bible. Until we're all on the same spiritual page, we got a long way to go. Until you can know what I'm thinking spiritually, and I can know what you're thinking spiritually, and we're both going to respond to the same situation with the same spirituality, we still got a ways to go as a church. Because we're the bride of Christ. We are all one. You may be the leg, I may be the hand. You may be the pinky toe, I may be the thumb. We all got a job to do. My thumb been trigger thumbing for the past two weeks. Let me tell you something. I miss that thumb. My body misses that thumb yeah. functioning the way it's supposed. That little bitty thumb. Poop, 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 poop. When I'm tight, dog, poop, 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 poop. Any little thing go wrong in the body, the rest of the body knows it. So in the body of the church, when the tail, when the leg, when the toes ain't acting right, don't you know the bride is limping? We all got a job to do. Yes, 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 sir. Do not be hearty, verse 16, in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Mm -hmm. Well, you won't be wise in your own estimation. You won't push all your secular accomplishments. You won't look down upon others with less education, with less common sense than you have, because you'll know what it says in chapter 12, verse 3. When it tells you, I say to every man among you, not to think more highly of himself than you are thinking. Amen. If you ain't thinking high of yourself, you ain't got to worry about associating with the Lord. If you're not thinking too highly of yourself, I'm not saying think of yourself as lower than dirt. I'm just saying don't elevate yourself to a position where you think you God over somebody. All right. All right. All right. All right. Your wisdom ain't nothing but foolishness to God. And all the paper man and stamped under your name. Right. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. It'll get this, verse 18. If possible, I like that. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. If possible. That means that certain things have a limit. Uh, some people you can't make peace with. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you can try. Yes, that means shake the dust off your feet and move on. Don't let the lack of peace yes, be on your shoulders. Yes, That's why I say, if possible, yes. as far as it depends on you, yes. you can't be held accountable for what depends on somebody else. Right. So if they want to keep cutting the food and not be at peace with you, that's between them and God. Right. So you let them deal with God. There's a story about when we're talking about being peacemakers in this economy about social security. I don't know if you heard the one about the, the, the old lady and the policeman. There was this old lady who was speeding, and the police pulled her over. And he looked at the old lady, and, and, and the old lady said that, uh, uh, sir, I have a uh, license to pack a concealed weapon. 
And, and, and the man said, you do? He said, she said, yes, I do. She said, where's your gun? She said, in the glove compartment. So the officer said, let me hold on to your gun. And then the cop felt something about the old lady. He looked at it and said, something ain't right. He said, ma'am, do you have any other concealed weapons? And the lady said, yes, I do. He said, where is it? She said, in the trunk. So he went to the trunk and got that one. But the lady had a still a cocky attitude. He just, the old lady. And it was just unusual. So he said, ma'am, are you still holding back something from me? She said, yes. You have another gun? He says, she said, yes. She said, where is that? He said, under my seat. He said, give me that gun there. And then the man walked around scratching his Why has this old lady got all these guns? And so he came back to the, to the window and he said, ma'am, what is it you're so afraid of? And the lady looked right at him and said, not a doggone thing. <laughs> See, some people look at their physical weapons as their peacemakers. Your physical weapon ain't your peacemaker. God is your peacemaker. She wasn't worried about a thing because she was locked and loaded with her peacemaker. I ain't worried about a thing because I'm locked and loaded with my peacemaker. And he's called Jesus Christ. You're so afraid of I'm looking dead now and say, not a dog on thing. And I ain't got a gun on me. I ain't got a bullet to my name. But I'm packing. But I'm packing. Amen. 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 Let's look at this here. Uh, never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. We have to be able to let God deal with other people. We be, for in it's written, vengeance is mine. This is from Deuteronomy 32 and 35. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. The reason why God can't deal with other people is That's because right. you refuse to get out of the way and let God deal with them. You try to deal with them and you left no room for God to deal with them. God can't get in and do nothing because there you is trying to fix it. And every time you try to fix it, God says, all right, I'm going to get out of the way. Ten years later, God says, I'm still out of the way because this fool's still trying to do it on their own. Leave room for the vengeance of God. But if right. your enemy right. is hungry, feed him. Amen. And if he is thirsty, give him a drink. Amen. For in doing so, you will heat burning coals upon his head. That means take care of your enemy. Amen. And just by chance, you may shame them into uh -huh. doing what's right. Uh -huh. Try that and see what it works. Uh -huh. Try that on uh -huh. your job. Uh -huh. Try that at your school. Somebody treat you wrong, treat them right. Uh -huh. Treat them right in front of everybody. See them treat you wrong, and let everybody see you yeah. treat them right. Uh -huh. And over time, God will move on them. Yeah. Probably yeah. through somebody you don't even know. Somebody come yeah. up to the man, why you treat Pastor Oliver so bad? Mm -hmm. All he do is talk about how good a worker you are. All he do is talk about how mature you've been gotten this and And all I hear you do, they go, I know people see that. Heap hot coals on the head. Yeah. Get used to heaving. Get used to heaving. Look here, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil 